fantastic to see so many people here and across the political parties as well. And I do recognise Will Hodgman, who's here as well as our federal members and other state uh, parliamentary members, mayors from across the northern and northwest region as well, but most importantly, you. You as community members who are here to support the mining industry. I thought those songs at the beginning were fantastic. You know, I thank each and every one of you for turning up here today, it's just amazing. And it just goes to show, you know, they, they came down here a month or so ago and had a protest out of venture. Uh, eight of them turned up. <laughs> I join you and, uh, and certainly uh, the meeting that was in Burnie more recently, that we believe in and want to recognise responsible development in Tasmania and particularly on the West Coast. Uh, the AWU and other supporters of our Tark on Our Future went to Canberra and presented the petition that was based on uh, the uh, rally in Burnie and um, uh, in the surrounding times of it. Went to Canberra and I thank Ian and his team uh, for that. They had a good meeting with the Minister. The Minister listened to the message from this region which is about responsible balance development and he made the decision and it was unpopular with many people in uh, the green movement he made the decision that he would not nationally heritage list this region for the very reasons that you offered and common sense dictates but here we are in downtown Tulla all are standing behind the mining industry and Darrell's right I am the Minister for Mines in Tasmania and I take that job very, very seriously. And in fact, um, I believe that as a result of the work that was done by the AWU uh, in, uh, and, the, uh, and our federal politicians, uh, together with you as a, co a community, made a huge difference with respect to the listing of, uh, by the narrow national heritage uh, on, uh, of the, uh, the Tarkine region. That rally was a turning point with respect to that decision. But I want to remind people that this is not a political rally. But it has to be said that in the first place, Malcolm Turnbull put on the, uh, the uh, National Heritage uh, listing uh, for assessment. So it just goes to show that it has been across the political spectrum for a long period of time. And I'm so pleased in the end that Tony Burke made the decision not to blanket list this area because it does give us an opportunity to progress. If we get the Mount Lindsay mine up, you've got around a thousand jobs in construction alone, let alone then the ongoing jobs that will be part of that mine too. And we don't forget that what we're talking about here is only 1% of this region that's been opened up to mining. If we want to be talking about balance and responsibility, I don't think there's any denying that that's exactly what we're achieving here. We do have the right to realise the $11 billion worth of resource in the ground. Riley Project. You know, I think you've seen a lot in the media over the last few weeks about the devastation, the destruction and, and everything that's going to be caused out there. Well, that's rubbish. You know, we know it's rubbish. Uh, it's, We've got to stop dealing in emotion and lies. We've got to deal with facts and the truth. The facts of the project are, the project will, will utilise approximately one square kilometre. And that one square kilometre has been recently logged. So it's hardly a pristine forest. You know, 20 to 30 metre panels that are mined. As they mine that one panel and move on to the next one, they'll re rehabilitate the, the panel before it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that uh, I get across to you that not only as the Premier has indicated have we supported uh, the mines uh, getting their approvals which are rigorous, we know that, and Jenny pointed that out but they have to be rigorous because we do have a federal court system in Australia that in the end can be challenged or uh, means that uh, people have the opportunity to go to those courts wouldn't matter if it was uh, Clive Palmer or Bob Catter or wherever else around in the country the federal court is still going to exist. So we have to make sure we have it right when it comes to the approvals process. And I can tell you that the legislation that is in place in Tasmania will not be changed by us or anyone else with respect to giving approvals. It's a rigorous process 
but it is a process that has been agreed to by everyone and it is fair and reasonable. So therefore we will back those processes in and in the end uh, the Federal Court uh, will rule, in my uh, humble opinion, that these mines can go ahead. We want them to go ahead. Now, the worry we have is that he's made a decision on Shri following full responsible uh, processes. That will be appealed. I'm concerned that this will then become the form for every other application. But remember this, every application must follow due process. But from the, the fact that Shri has been given its full approvals, uh, we've been working with Venture uh, and them to ensure that we have the necessary infrastructure in place to allow these mines to get underway. We've got money being spent at the Burnie Port as we speak, six million to facilitate the Venture project. We've got an agreement with Taz Rail on the sidling to ensure that the uh, Met Ore can get away. That work has been done. And we've also um, got a connection agreement uh, through TransEnd to ensure that the Venture project uh, has the necessary energy uh, to uh, facilitate it on into the future. All of those things have been ticked off by the government uh, with a view to facilitating the project. We know who's behind this. We know this is a strategy that was drawn up not five years ago, not ten years, this was drawn up 20 years ago. When the Greens, or the Bob Brown, and they beat Gordon below Franklin Dam and they sat down and formed the Greens and they decided what the strategy was going to be for their party. First of all, it was logging. So it took them a bit longer to get rid of logging and what they fought and forestry, but then it was mining. So now they've got a win in the forestry industry and they're happy with what they've got, they're now going to attack the mining. Now they say, and they say, and they've seen it and they've been in the paper, they are opposed to all new mines. Well, how do you kill a snake? You cut off its head. So if you kill the mining, you stop all new mines, what's going to happen to existing mines? The existing mines we've got are anything from 120 to 60, 50, 60 years old. These mines are going to last forever. So do you want people to dictate to you where you can live, where you can work, whether your kids can prosper, whether your community can prosper, and whether the people of Tasmania can prosper? Because at the end of the day, what it's about is their lack of respect for the people of Tasmania. The Tarkoan National Coalition uh, is a, an organisation uh, who uh, in effectively, in my opinion, punch above their weight because they are given far too much credit. It is, not, it is not the local bloke here that's on the, in the advocate every couple of days or on the TV that is running the show. Like most of these organisations, they're actually funded by the big end of town. Doctors, um, uh, the, the Graham Woods of the world, people with lots of dough who have a philosophical position. It's not the people with dreadies, it's not the people with dreadies swinging in the trees that are actually um, funding these organisations. And that's why it's right that as ordinary people, we need to allow people to understand how important these projects are to us. Because we don't have the resources to run all the uh, massive campaigns that are being run around Australia and the world. The fact is, a, a boatload of war going over the horizon, as it once did, and we didn't have to worry about it anymore, is a thing of the past. We have to fight in a different way. But today's turnout, I believe, will allow the Tasmanian people, the Australian people, and anybody else that's interested, to know that we want a sustainable, well-managed mining industry to exist in Tasmania, and I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I will be fighting as hard as I possibly can to ensure that that happens. If you don't work in an industry that they condone, they're going to send you to extension, like they've done with the hydro, like they've done with the forestry, and now they're attacking the mining. So where does it end? It ends with us. We're to blame because we've let these bastards get around for 20 years doing what they want. It's time for us to stand up and say, we're taking Tasmania back. We want Tasmania back. We'll decide what's best for Tasmania. Before Bob Brown and the Greens ever got here, 
Thirty odd percent of this state was locked up in the national park and wild uh, world heritage areas. There's one thing we've got that over over any other endangered species in this state, and we've got the right to vote. We're committed to responsible uh, development in this region. Your voice has been heard, and I thank you for that, and we'll continue that fight. But be assured, the federal government wants responsible development, and responsible development on the West Coast includes significantly mining. So thanks for turning up. Thanks for your support. We're not going away. We're here for the long haul. We'll campaign as long as they do. And in fact, we'll campaign one day longer. And we'll, we'll win. <laughs>